Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Welcome back. Today is part two of how to make at least $100,000, at least listeners, at least some of you are going to do that in like two or three days, but how to make at least $100,000 in the first 100 days of 2024. And today we're focused specifically on lead generation. So Julie, when you were thinking of this topic, how did, tell me what your uh, masterful coaching brain, how you came across this as an idea that all these guys would love. Well, we know for sure that the first quarter of any new year is a big determiner of how that year is going to go for you. Because if you, you know, wait and you're getting ready to get started to wait till the year flips, then you're going to wait till after the new year week is over and then you're going to get into action. Well, you've already blown probably two weeks. And then even if you do get a new listing, how long is that going to take to sell you're going to take some time to find inventory for a buyer. And then all of a sudden it's April. Well, exactly. It always goes back to the whole idea that like, uh, you know, we're from the Midwest. And so when we sold real estate, you'd hear people say all the time, sellers in particular, well, I'm going to put my house on the market in the spring. And it only took Julie and I losing probably three or four listings to realize right. that we need to ask them what the heck they mean by the spring. Because yeah. it turns out we thought, because again, our first year in the business, we were learning on the job. You learn from our mistakes. Don't make mm -hmm. your own to learn from those. But yeah, so they would say, well, we want to list the house in the spring. Julie and I would think naturally April or whatever. Turns out spring to them meant January 1st. They you know. want to be out of the house by spring. Exactly. So you're going to have to realize uh, moving forward on today's topic that really at the end of the day, if you want the most amount of leverage in your real estate business and you generally, you absolutely have to create leads. If you don't have leads, you're out of business. So where are the leads that we will want you to focus on for the sake of creating leverage for the rest of 2024? Listings. That's right. So remember, you're focused mainly on listings because listings will automatically create buyers for you. Work with the buy work the buyers yourself or pre-qualify them and refer them to referral partners. And the reality of it is, is that 2024, even for those of you who have been listless your entire real estate careers, mm -hmm. 2024 is going to be one of the best opportunities to become listing agents in at least the last, certainly the last five years, but arguably the last 10 or 12 years. There is going to be a lot, or there are a lot of homeowners, even with low rate mortgages, guys, who are going to want to sell their homes this year. Rates are going to fall. We're expecting rates to drop by, um, you know, significantly into 2024, but they're going to start decreasing in January. And we're also predicting, listen to our podcast that we did last week about our 2024 predictions, that there's going to be at least a million more home sales in 2024 over 2023. 2023, aside from 2009, is going to go down in history as the worst year in real estate for resale home sales. We have hit the bottom. Now we're building our way back. So even if you've never been a listing agent or thought of yourself that way, this is a perfect time, perfect opportunity for you to shift your mindset. Who listening right now, the tens of thousands of you that are going to download today's show, who listening right now wouldn't rather have, say, 10 active listings at all times versus versus maybe 20 or 30 buyers. I mean, every single one of you intuitively know the power of being a listing agent. You have to make the decision to put your best energies and focus on becoming a listing agent. So hopefully we're going to pivot you in that direction on today's show. That's right. So this is part two. We're talking about how to make 100,000 in your first 100 days. We're getting to the lead generation part. You got to have the leads to do the listings. All right, point number one, look to your past clients and sphere of influence otherwise known as your database, statistically, when you have regular and real conversations with that list, 10% of your list will either do business with you or refer business to you every year. We talked about that yesterday extensively. So go back and listen to that podcast. But what Julie's challenging all of you to do, some of you have these big databases of buyers. And we've talked to some of you who are becoming coaching clients. How many leads, or how many people do you have in your database? Thousands, 3,000, 5,000. And they're like very prideful of that. It's almost like a, a, a flex. I have 10,000 people. Okay, here's what your homework's going to be. Call all of the people, the 300 people in your database, call the ones, you know, even the ones you're emailing. Oh, I saw this person opened up, you know, this email I sent them. They're actively looking. Why aren't you calling them? Because what you're going to discover is many of you have people who are in your life, in your database, in your orbit, and you think they're buyers. They actually have homes to sell. That's right. So your job is to sort out who's just a contact 
and who is an actual lead and what is their trajectory using the scripts that we give you in Premier Coaching? A lead is not a lead until you're pre-qualified them, until you've That's used right. our script, our conversation outline, for those of you who are find the word uh, script abhorrent, but mm-hmm. use our conversation outline, pre-qualify them for their motivation, all the rest of it, ask all the questions. When they've gone through that process, then they're actually a lead. But again, the main thing is, is focus on the fact that very, we're guessing in many markets, 50% of the quote unquote buyers actually have homes to sell as well. That's right. So what would happen if you committed to speaking with, and actually did it, with 100% of the people in your database this quarter? Well, don't get mad when another agent lists your past client if you're not making that effort. Most of you, when you're talking to between five and 10 people from your database every day first quarter, you will get through your entire list. Scripts for making those calls as well as your 12-month center of influence plan are all in Premier Coaching. So let's go on to point number two, expired listings. Expireds are near the top of the list because of the following. They clearly want to sell. Many of them have to sell. These are the listings you're looking for. They're highly motivated. There's been an increase in expireds recently since most agents still had two short listing agreements or they bailed during the holidays or the sellers wanted to take a break. There are more expireds, withdrawns, and cancels. Aspirational pricing and competition from new construction have also created more expired and withdraw listings. The next reason you love expireds is because you know what is probably the wrong price. Now, with the exception of the older expireds, where you probably can get them more than what they expired at, but your comparative market analysis, your CMA, is much easier on an expired listing. Let me drop in this. So sometimes people ask Julie and I, if you guys were to get back into real estate, what would you be doing? Like they're expecting us to say something different than we say every day on the podcast. And our... <laughs> now we're really going to tell you. Exactly. Now that. we're going to tell you the secret. Yeah. We One, we would move to a very expensive market. We happen to live in one, but you know, yes. if you're selling meat and potatoes houses and 15 minutes away, there's houses that cost 10 times as much, uh, sell there, <laughs> yeah. right? It's the same amount of work for a lot more money. That'd be number one. Number two, uh, build your center of influence and past client lists as much as you can. Many, many, many studies have all pointed to the same thing. When you have been in real estate for at least five years, something like 70% of all your business is going to come from centers of influence and past clients. Actively pursue building your list at all times, but it does not count if all you're doing is putting data in a electronic CRM database and all that digital follow-up. That is not the same. Just as having the list does not get you transactions. You have to make the, do the work, make the proactive contacts, and then you'll start getting the benefit. So we'd absolutely positive positively do that. High in sale price, centers of influence and past clients. And the next thing we would do is absolutely hunt expired listings because the hunt, the expired listings. Now I'm not saying we're not saying other sources. We teach you 30 different sources of listing leads in our premier coaching program, but why expired? It's for this first reason, Julie said the market's already rejected the house based on the previous price. The market's already maybe told them what was wrong with the house condition wise, what was wrong with the house location wise. The market's already done most of the bludgeoning for you, but you also know they're willing to hire an agent and they're willing to pay a commission. In other words, these people, and maybe when they originally listed the house, they weren't that motivated, but now they are. You guys get it? Old expireds are a gold mine. And by the way, in today's show description, not only do you have all of our notes, but you also have a link to subscribe to Reddick. Some of you are saying, all right, Tim, I totally get it. I'm I'm excited. I want to chase expired listings. Um, I totally understand the benefit of doing that. How do I get the data? No, we do not want you to laboriously go and try to research every single phone number. Subscribe to Red X. The link is below. There's a $150 discount when you click on that link. It's exclusively for our podcast and coaching clients. Click down below, click the link. You will then be able to subscribe to Red X. And what they'll do is every morning, they're going to send you the list of the new expires in your marketplace, send you the usually four or five different phone numbers, cell phones and whatnot. They're going to send you all the information, making sure the house hasn't been relisted. And then we're, you're going to use our scripts, conversation outlines, and you're going to call those people. And you're going to start miraculously, almost like magic, mm-hmm. starting to set expired and, or set listing appointments. Now, here's a little secret sauce to all this. Because we're coming out of an era where it was uh, essentially a seller's market, and there weren't that, uh, in some markets, there weren't that many expired compared to, say, a normal market like what it's starting to slowly become, a lot of agents 
haven't ever developed the skill set to become expired to actually be efficient at uh, calling expireds. Or they don't frank- even know how to find expireds. Exactly, or centers of influence. So what they think, what ev- if your first go to when Julie and I are prescribing to you what you should do to get into action is how to simplify uh, what we're asking you to do? I'm going to send them letters. I'm going to follow them on Facebook. Anything that if your brain goes to the path of the least resistance. And the most resistance is a skill set that you have to learn. And then once you learn that skill set, you're going to have the, get the most benefit. So if you're always looking for the easy button, you're going to needlessly struggle forever and always be susceptible to, you know, frankly, wanting to look for the easy buttons, the short, the, the shiny objects and all the rest of it. And you're never going to have, you'll, you'll, you're resisting or procrastinating understanding and accepting that if you want ever increasing levels of success in your, uh, in your business and personal life, you have to do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Move away from being complacent, dare I say being lazy, and move towards the highest and truest version of yourself as a highly successful real estate practitioner. Very well put. And my favorite expired story, which illustrates all of the points that you just went through, we have a coaching client named Lisa in Indianapolis. Lisa is smart. She uses Red X. Lisa starts with the highest end and works her way backwards because she knows there's less competition in the high end. Now, high end in Indianapolis is different than high end on the coasts. So her, my favorite story from her is when she was calling on expireds, she came across a million-ish, I think it was like a million one, and was like, okay, well, I'm just going to call this person. Let's see if they're motivated, if they still have to sell. Okay, the guy was an executive who had been building his house, building his $2 million house, and he said to her, he literally said to her, I knew it was overpriced, but at the but at the time I was building my house, I thought I would put it out there, see if I lucked out, and if I got the right price, then I would have done a double move. And now it's completely different. Not only do I have a mortgage on my million dollar house, now I've closed on my two million dollar house, and he literally said, "Just tell me what to do." What you're addressing is one of the, frankly, the silliest things we hear from folks when they're contemplating calling expires. Why would I want something that hasn't sold before? It didn't or, sell for that agent. Why would it sell for me? Exactly. Okay, you go ahead and go down that path, and all the rest of you that want to be successful in real estate, listen to what I'm about to say. In Julie's example. The level of motivation for that particular seller changed over time. And that's what happens all the damn time, right? That's what you're going to experience. Or frankly, maybe the seller was just a little ornery uh, to get showings uh, approved. Or maybe the house had some condition issues. We did a whole podcast on that. I think it was called Top 5 or Top 6 Expired Secrets That Are Not Just Price. And how many expireds, if you guys really want to frankly, boggle your brains, go to your MLS, look to see how many expireds there were in your overall MLS, not just your little tiny market, but your overall MLS in the last 12 months. And you're going to see an astronomically large number. And then I want you to, if you really want to go down this rabbit hole, figure out what the average sale price was and multiply that times whatever the average list side commission is. Then ask yourself, how many of those would you have had to have in the last 12 months to have the best year ever? Well, let's not make the mistake of ignoring what is one of the best opportunities opportunities in real estate, which is, you know, yet to be sold expired listings. Mm -hmm. And you start becoming the expert at that. So if you want to get really good and become really successful and have huge net profits in your business and centers of influence past clients, and then choose your next spoke, which will probably be if you are frankly being coached by us would be expired listings because it is absolutely the best opportunity. How many of you are spending money worry about branding and marketing? I'm trying to find a lead. I'm searching for people that are motivated. I'm, uh, you know, doing all this, you know, TikToking in this video, those branding stuff, the marketing stuff. How many of you are thinking that's the path you're going to follow in 2024? What's the purpose? Why are you doing it? Well, I want to take listings, Tim. I want people to call me. I don't want to actually have to do the proactive lead generation. I mean, if I do all this marketing and branding, then I'm have all these. That is a lie. It is largely a lie, but it does work. The marketing and branding does work to reinforce the proactive lead generation. To think that you can just buy your way to success when everyone else is doing the same thing is an exercise in ruin and losing another great year or what could have been another great year. If you're actually doing the proactive lead generation to the expires in a community where you're already doing some, you know, postcards or marketing or branding, yes, that will reinforce the proactive lead contact that you made. But doing one without the other makes it so that you're going to waste your money, waste your time, 
And then the problem is, is you're going to lose opportunity. And in many cases, you're going to start losing confidence and faith in yourself to become a successful practitioner. Just swallow what some of you might consider a bitter pill and accept the fact that if you want ever increasing levels of success in your business and personal life, you must do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. That is why it's called work and not vacation. (laughs) Okay. I, and we could talk, and we have talked forever about expireds because they are such a sweet honey hole. Okay. Well, they they are for everybody and uh, every well, everybody market. that takes action on it. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, okay. You know, it's funny though. Someone's going to listen right now. I know what they're thinking. I'm going to go to the MLS, and I'm here's my house or my office. Yep. And I'm going to look within a 10 mile radius. Oh, Tim and one Julia, zip code. Tim, exactly. Or one MLS area, right? Yep. Tim and Julie are wrong. No expireds. I said the entire MLS. For all listings. Start large, and then you can whittle it back, to, and you can be picky after you know what's actually available. All right, point number three, another favorite. And we're doing this kind of in order, right? There's a reason. We know center of influence should be number one, because all of you have one. Number two, all of you have access to expireds, and we gave you a discount code. No excuses. Number three, nearly all of you have this, although you may need to research and find it, and that is new build salespeople. These are the salespeople who sit in the builder's model homes and write up all those new construction contracts. Use our new construction plan, if you're a Premier Coaching member, to meet those new build reps and get all of their resale referrals. When someone builds with them, especially as you go up in price, and they have a home to sell, what happens to that lead? This is a fantastic lead source because you can have one new build salesperson uh, contact who sends you multiple leads per year or even per month. What if you had five new build salesperson relationships? Another great honey hole and not that hard to develop. Well, I know people, you and I both know people who are making over a million dollars a year and that's where they get their business. Mm -hmm. But there's a little carve out to that. So your plan, your prescription there works for every kind of new build rep, Yep. but where a lot of money can be made isn't from the DR Hortons and the big builders. It's from the medium sized builders. Mm -hmm. Because those medium-sized builders will oftentimes be willing to list their spec homes with you. Julie, what's a spec home? A spec home, spec stands for speculation. That's a home that they do not yet have a contract on. They are building it. Sometimes that is in a subdivision. Let's say they're building 10 homes in one street. It's more efficient to build all 10, even if they only have seven contracts. The other three are spec homes. They will come. But Julie, why wouldn't they just list it with their in-house broker or in-house agent? Because they usually don't have one. But the real reason is is because that build rep or that builder, if you're dealing directly with the builder, is going to want to uh, give you a listing or give you opportunities to sell more of their product if you're showing energy and enthusiasm for their inventory. And the best way to do that is every time you're working with buyers, bring the buyers by to see what they have for sale. That builder's going to see that you've got hustle and they're going to be very inclined to want to reinforce you Uh, frankly, helping them sell real estate. And so they are then going to give you some of their spec homes. But you have to ask and you have to earn the right to be their listing agent through your efforts. And not just one builder and then you give up. Yeah, not just one builder and you give up. But there is, and I have to say... The, I like the order in which you've done these mm-hmm. because it's all about urgency. Yes. The first one, centers of influence, past client. We know that's the lowest hanging fruit on everyone's mm-hmm. lead tree. The expires because we know those sellers. An obvious source. Yeah, exactly. Because they already have their hand up in the air. Hey, Julie, I've got a house I to know, sell. Right? No, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, no. I'm going to ignore those 10 expires. I'm going to go make a bunch of TikTok videos <laughs> and do a bunch of branding. Exactly. Call the people who already identify themselves as being sellers. And I love the next one. Be- and all these things, expires take skill. It does. All these takes differing well, levels. To do all of these, not just one. Exactly. But definitely start in this order. Yeah, because we're talking about $100,000 in 100 days. Well, you know, it is, I have to say, Julie, though, when you say that, it is funny to me because we know for a fact that there's agents that are making like 30 to 50 to 60,000 per transactions. I know. Yeah. Adjust accordingly. Exactly. <laughs> Give me a break. You almost should have. You guys done. are so blessed. You have no idea how spoiled you are with the average sale price. You should. You should have almost made this. Um, how to do ten transactions for with, first quarter? Yeah, exactly. Right, like with one hand tied behind your back. Okay. <laughs> so uh, number four, again, in order for a reason, for sale by owners. When the market is hot like it's been for so long, there are always plenty of unrepresented owners, otherwise known as FISBOs, who need your help. Most of them, though, will give up on the process if it's not sold in the first two weekends. There are luxury-priced unrepresented owners in today's market as well. This is a great opportunity because many of them have not yet bought, so there's two transactions there. They might build with you or downsize or upsize and purchase with you. Now, here's another little known fact. Many for sale by owners in today's market were first expireds 
They simply didn't know what else to do, probably because an agent like you had not yet reached out to them. I'm going to lean back into luxury. So what you're going to see is a lot of sellers of more expensive properties, they will, if the house expired, is sometimes they won't necessarily go FISBO, but they actually might put it for rent. I know that seems That's bizarre, true. but it's true. Valerie Fitzgerald was a great example. During the housing crash of 07, 08, you know, we had her, she's one of the best agents in the country, really. Um, and she's out in LA and she sells nothing but luxury. All of her inventory, basically all of her standing inventory, which is 12 or 15 units, if I remember correctly, she made all of those into rentals. That's right, because they didn't want to sell because prices were coming down. There was a lot of inventory to compete with. And when you're in those luck, that luxury end of things, you know, a lot of those sellers have other assets. They were not distressed. They didn't have to sell. They didn't right. actually want to sell. And why would you sell if prices are declining and you have a lot of com competition? So she was smart and turned them into rentals. And then she got them again as listings when they put them back That's for right. sale. But what the reason I'm sharing this with you is because you might want to, you know, Julie's idea here of the, obviously the for sale by owners and the, think in terms of like, uh, for rent by owners, think of the VRBOs. If you're in an area like where Julie and I live. Those are we, a later podcast. Right. Pretty cool. Exactly. We have a friend that had their house. They remodeled the house. It's spectacular. They have it listed for $5.8 million. They didn't get $5.8 million. So guess what they've done? They've made it into a VRBO. Yeah. Well, if Julie and I were selling real estate here, I would be going through all, especially the expensive VRBOs. I'm, I wouldn't even bother looking to see if their previous expired. I would call them up. Uh, first of all, you can go on VRBO ex as an example, and you can see what the rental history is. Most VRBO sellers are open to it selling, not just keeping it as a rental. There, it, it's, it's, a, it's a term Julie and I coined a long time ago. It's called being a reluctant landlord. Yes. <laughs> and, I mean, we own a property. We didn't plan on turning our little ranchette in Texas into a rental. It turned out to be a great one, though. It turned though. out to be, but it wasn't the plan in the first place. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so last but not least, on today's part of you making a hundred thousand in your first hundred days coming up is open houses. Refer to our podcast, how to not just sit in open house, how to monetize them. We've done lots of open house podcasts. And in premier coaching, there's an extensive checklist. Yes, use with the scripts. Che premier coaching clients use our open house checklist. It's copywritten. It's absolutely uh, state of the art. I know it sounds like, oh, why is there a, open houses are easy? Well, if you do them correctly, you're going to create a massive amount of leads from the open houses. Uh, and the checklist is in Premier Coaching. By the way, as is as the case with every every show we do, the notes for today's show are down below in the show description. Also a link to join Premier Coaching. You can join Premier Coaching now for free. Do not delay. That should be a little, you know, start of the year gift for yourself. Become a Premier Coaching client. You definitely want the, uh, essentially to be part of the movement that we've created inside real estate through a premier coaching, because you're going to be surrounded with like-minded people that want to treat this year, 2024, this coming year, if you're listening to it now or later, right? You want to have this be the year where you know you are in the right place at the right time and you absolutely made the right uh, efforts and you were essentially not letting the ball get by you. For those of you who understand that analogy, that comes from the other side of you becoming a premier coaching client. Scroll down, click the link below. All right. So back to open houses and then we're going to wrap today. Our open house system and scripts are proven to generate a bare minimum of three closable buyers or sellers every time. But it is all about choosing the right house in the first place, promoting the open house properly, using good scripts, and having relentless lead follow-up. Many of our coaching clients have spun this source up to a very predictable listing machine. If you've failed at open houses before, or maybe you've just dabbled at them, then you are missing a key element of the system that will make it work. So for example, you were talking about uh, some of our listeners and coaching clients that have a higher average sale price. Somebody like Tammy Irby in Northern Virginia, Longtime coaching client, one of our, my one on one clients. Her average commission is between twenty and $25,000. She could make $100,000 in her first 100 days on five open house leads. Okay. Why? Because she has a fully systematized, fully optimized open house plan. She does not wing it. She absolutely chooses the right house. Fortunately for her, she is a listing agent, and they're mostly her listings that she does. She has a whole plan, a checklist. She uses scripts. Her husband well, helps she's, her. She's using the whole premier, nine. She's using a premier coaching mm -hmm. session. Yes. But she's there. Obviously, she wants to sell the property. But she's, she's there. She's also lead generating. It, what, you guys got to think how absolutely is insane it is, the advantage that all of us have um, as real estate practitioners, just from a, essentially a lead generation perspective. Think about this. So how much would Google or Facebook pay to take out 
a little billboard in the front of your house. I bet you they would pay you an obscene amount of money if local zoning laws made it so that all of us could start for you know, sure. renting out a little billboard. That's called your for sale sign. Now, think beyond that. You follow our checklist. You're putting out a bunch of directionals. You have a bunch of for sale signs. Everywhere people look on a Saturday or a Sunday, they're seeing your name pointing to a particular house. You can actually build a, uh, essentially have a line of people wanting to get in your open house. Our premier coaching clients, and by the way, premier coaching clients, email us these pictures. We love them. Have often created lines, sometimes 20, 30, 50 people deep just to get into an open house. That is what happens when you follow a proven system. How many of the people meandering, like, so here, scale this thought up, right? And we've been focusing a lot on upper end listings. So let's say you hold, I don't have any upper end listings. How can I hold it open, Tim? Hold somebody else's listing open. That's not an excuse. So let's say you're holding an upper end in your market is say $2 million. Everyone who's going to be looking for a $2 million house is probably going to be moving out of selling into, or I'm sorry, selling an existing house to buy the next one. They might be selling one that's a million, million and a half. You guys get the point. Every single buyer going through that open house for $2 million is going to have a house to sell. You got to start thinking like that. Well, okay, I think like that, Tim, but what now? Is Why am I not generating more leads? Because you're not following a system. Because you're not having intentional conversations. Because you're not actually putting yourself in a position to earn the right to be their real estate professional. In other words, you just sat there and you, you maybe made some cookies but you didn't actually try to converse with them. You didn't actually follow didn't our system. You didn't interact. They will work with you. There's a whole bunch of research that's, always, that's been done on this that most people work with the first agent that they meet. That does a good job. Okay. So there you, you illustrate a good point. And that's why a lot of our podcasts about open houses center on the fact that your job is to, I hate it when agents say, I'm going to sit in an open house. Why don't you say, I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to sit there. Really? <laughs> Who came up with that phrase? It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, how many times have we gone into open houses oh where we walk in the front door? Because Julie and I are always looking for real estate. We're habitual that way. And we walk in and you'll hear a voice from like the echoes of the back of the house. Come on in. You know, you're know, you not sure if it's like the grandpa of the house or it's the agent. Right? right. You're not sure what you're walking into. And then you walk in, you meander about the house and you see some agent who doesn't even look up. Who says, yeah, yeah, sign my sign in. Watching book. football on the Watch, Exactly. I mean, what the hell are you even doing? Open houses don't work. Yeah. That's because you're not working. <laughs> exactly. Oh you goodness. guys get the I point. I go on. But that, there's a difference, right? You have to engage like Tammy does. She's got a systematic approach. They, so there's a second part of this open house thing. Sometimes you guys are great in person at the open house. You show them all the bells and whistles of the house. You have great market knowledge. You know all the houses in the neighborhood for sale. You got the whole nine going. And then you either don't get them to sign in or you did get them to sign in and you sit on that lead for a week or you sit on your open house leads until you feel desperate for your next transaction versus calling them the same night or even better, talking to them, asking them good questions and determining if there's somebody that you can work with that they're not already working with an agent and setting an appointment while they're still in the open house. Exactly. <laughs> That's the whole point is to have meaningful conversations. Well, I've been having meaningful conversations, Tim, but I'm just not generating any leads. You've been having meaningful conversations about the weather. Uh, but you've been looking, you, a lot of you are essentially just operating intuitively from lack of professional, like, you know, you're not following a system. So you're trying to bond with them. You spend so much time trying to bond with them. Oh, I go to this, you know, my kids go to this school. You go to this school. You have a golden retriever. I have a golden retriever. That stuff doesn't work. You will maybe make a friend, but you're not going to generate a lead. They expect a professional to act professionally. If they stumbled across you and all you did was have these little surface conversations that they could have had from with someone in line at Starbucks, it's no wonder you're not generating any leads from that. Does that make sense? It does. Even if you're following each other on Instagram, does not mean <laughs> that they are a lead. They are just a friend. They're a contact. You have to have a conversation with that decision-making adult about real estate specifically, they're either going to, maybe it's, you know, not no forever, but not no, but no for now, because I don't have a need. Maybe I just closed six months ago. Maybe, you know, there's a reason I'm renting for a while. You can still be friends, but you have to have those conversations. And if they say, you know what, I really have been kicking around the idea I hear about rates are coming down and gosh, you know, I, I'm not sure what to do. Okay. Well, have a further conversation. So it's all about having those face-to-face, phone-to-phone, voice-to-voice conversations and doing your follow-up immediately. That's a whole other section. It is related to uh, open houses, but 
the idea of relentless lead follow-up, furiously fast lead follow-up, that makes a huge difference as well. All right, guys. So that is today's show. And we sincerely appreciate you keeping this number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. It is our pleasure. It is our honor to hold that special place in your lives. And we sincerely appreciate your continued support through Premier Coaching. And those of you who are ready to take the next natural step in your uh, real estate careers and have a brokerage upgrade, if you're not already at eXp Realty, Julie and I would love the right to earn the right to be your eXp Realty sponsor. And there's information how you can do so in the show description below, or you can just uh, text me directly at 512-758-0206. In the meantime, have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right. And don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're going to love that one.